Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Unturned Hard Mode on the Germany map. As the sun rises, it is time to get to work. As you may remember, we ended off last episode with a one-hour-long tree-chopping session to get materials to build a base down there on that lake, and I have done it. As you can see, we've got floors, even more floors, walls and windows, and pillars. Before we do that, we've got two items to craft. Chopping down all those trees has given me a fair amount of XP, so I've managed to get crafting one. I've gotten my agriculture almost maxed out. My survival is at max, and my exercise and cardio is on three and four, respectively. So, with crafting one, we're going to make a few things. First up, a makeshift scope. And then, oh yeah, we've got a makeshift rifle. T... See, there we go. Ooh. So, with this, we are going to be attempting the first thing, on the, or rather the second thing on today's uh, itinerary, if you will. We are going to attempt to rescue the Earl. That blue cargo van that's in the coalition zone. But again, before we can do that, we're going to be doing some building. So I'm going to grab a bunch of these fences, or er, fences, so I'm sorry, once again I am not quite up to speaking English right now, and anyway we are going to get building. I really need to find an Alice pack or a travel pack though because my inventory is slowly but surely shrinking. Da, 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 da. There we go. Well, I think that's just about all we can hold. Hang on a sec, let's throw some more stuff. Canteen, go in there. Let's throw this stuff in there. There we go. We've gotten a bunch of floors. So, I'm going to start building, and I'll get back with you after I've gotten something built. Okay, everyone, as you can see, we now have a bridge built across the water to the island here, and we have about a nice 3 by 3 area to build our house on. So while I put in the pillars and the walls and everything, let's have a little talk. First thing is about the uh, screen size of some of the videos, or rather my first video. If you look at that, you'll notice that when you put it in full screen on YouTube, it's not quite, doesn't quite fill it up. The reason being that I'm recording on a, I believe, 1600 by 900, or n no, 1900 by 600, excuse me, monitor. And that causes me to not be able to put it in a resolution or a screen size that would fill up all the way on YouTube. If I tried to do that, then, well, it just wouldn't work. It would, uh, well, it would be, if you can look at the screen, my health and everything would just be way out. You wouldn't be able to see it because, of course, the software I'm using, NVIDIA Shadow Play, records what's on the screen. So I'm having to blow it up usually in uh, editing and then use a sharpening tool that, or a uh, auto adjustment tool that YouTube provides in order to get it to look good or at least be a fairly viewable experience. So that's causing it to do too in some places that, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused in my words again, but it's causing the lighting to be a little odd, not quite right, if you will. So I'm, so, I'm sorry if the video's lighting is a little weird, but it's pretty much the best I can do at this point until I can get a bigger screen, and that's not going to be for a couple of months at least, probably, because screens like that, they're probably going to cost me to get a good one, at least $200, probably more like three or four, and I just don't have the money for that right now, and it'll be a while before I have that kind of money. And here... I think this is convenient. Let's demonstrate this. This is something that having my exercise upgraded allows me to do. I can just kind of kite these guys along a lot easier now because I can run a lot faster. So that's a nice thing. Another thing I wanted to talk about is sound quality. Again, if you watched my first video, you may have heard sharp little clicks on it, and that was from my SteelSeries mouse because I had to uh, have my... my, my excuse me, not my mouse, my microphone to the right side of my screen so that I could see it because it's, uh, the base doesn't pull it up or push it up very high. However, my second episode, or last episode, if you will, I put it 
in front of my keyboard and I put my monitor up on three big books like uh, encyclopedia, biology textbooks, stuff like that so that I could see the screen and also record well on my microphone. But during that episode, you probably would have heard clicks, maybe not many, but definitely a fair few from my keyboard. So this time I'm trying something completely new as I've pushed my keyboard behind my microphone. So my microphone is almost on the edge of my desk here, which will hopefully cause it to have fairly good audio quality and hopefully not pick up any uh, noise from my keyboard or mouse, or at the very least very little. And also, I've been, as the series goes on, turning down the boost on my microphone a little bit, so hopefully my voice sounds a little better than it did in episode one. Just right here, I managed to uh, kind of get going by raiding in there, actually. I just found some lettuce and tomatoes and such that weren't in good shape, so I crafted them into seeds and let them grow as I was harvesting, or as I was harvesting trees. And then I just kept harvesting them, and as you can see, my agriculture is on six out of seven, so I get almost every time double from them, so I could grow this garden up fairly quickly. So I'm going to turn two of these back into seeds and plant them. Then eat these two. Lettuce is by far the best vegetable in the game, because as you can see, it gives you a lot of water and ooh, excuse me, a lot of hydration back. So that's definitely one of the skills I upgrade very quickly is agriculture because it allows me to get a nice big garden going to feed myself pretty quickly. Because especially in hard mode where one of the features is spawns of food of, and uh, zombies chance to drop stuff is pretty significantly diminished. Having a garden that you can supply yourself with food is, becomes pretty important pretty quick. Especially because if you're getting your food from either... Uh, grocery stores or other places the quality on it might not be that good and it might drag your green bar down which again is bad because in hard mode it decreases from zombie hits way quicker so you have to really watch it okay and with that the skeleton of my base is finished that's all I have Besides a couple extra walls, looks like maybe I should have spent the wood on that to make a door frame and such instead. But after this episode is over, I'm going to do another one to two hour long resource gathering session. So I'll have a uh, staircase that'll go up to a second story right here. I'll have a roof on this place, and I'll have a garage door right here with a hopefully a door in it. But I suppose that doesn't really matter since we're on multiplayer. The door will just be for aesthetics. And I found this as I was going through the town looking for food and cloth for bandages. It was in the bank vault. So I love this thing for hard mode because it gives me a lot more reach than a knife would, which enables me to stay further away from the zombies as I'm attacking them, which, as you can imagine, is a very nice thing to be able to do. So I'm going to cut it out right here, and I will be back with you on the bridge as we sneak our way down to the Earl the Ural, however you pronounce it, and hopefully its battery is full because all the other cars I've seen on this map, their batteries have been dead. So if it is dead, then this Ural, not Ural, whole uh, Ural extraction operation will just, it won't even, it'll be all for nothing. So I'm going to get geared up and I'll see you over there. Okay everyone, I've established a start down here. I've cleared this area out, so all we need to do is clear out the police station over there to check for ammo, which we might need, and then we're just going to start sneaking down. I believe the URL is over down there, and retrieve it. So, let's get, let's get this guy. One, two. Drop anything good? No, didn't think so. Okay, let's sneak in here. Oh dear. Who spotted me? Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Okay. Bye, guy. So as I was saying, let's sneak in here and get this guy, and maybe we'll even find a gu an extra gun in here. Nope. Looks like, well, there's a clip and there's some cloth. Looks like we're still going to have to manage with, uh, just to make sure. Oh, dear. Oof. Nice job, Ivan. 
found zombies anywhere else in the map. No, <coughs> seriously. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, oh, oh, I thought he was stuck. He almost got me there. Handcuff ski? Eh, that's useless in single player. Oh, well, maybe it scraps down the middle, but I'm, is that a gun there? Is that a gun? No, it's a baton. Oh, there's ammo for the gun. There's metal. Cloth. You can hear another guy. Where is he? There's some more cloth. As you can see, I took a bit of a beating. <laughs> he was quick. He almost got me. So, yeah, as I was saying, for health is at 48, so yeah, you can definitely see I took a bit of a beating clearing out these tents. And I didn't really find much of anything good except coalition bottoms, which I'm not sure if they're necessarily good, but they're nice to have. So I match. So let's scrap up this stuff. Let's craft up some more bandages. Some more dressing. Yep. So let's see, how are we doing? Two dressing and a bandage. And I'm going to use one of those dressings right now. Because if a guy gets me in a corner and starts hitting me, he's going to have me dead before I can hit him. So. And besides, yep. Pants. There's a little more cloth, so we should be good when it comes to bandages for the rest of this. Ooh, I need a second to catch my breath. That guy scared me. Okay. Well, this isn't raiding. This is not raiding. This is a rescue mission. So let's get on with it. We're going to sneak down there. And we're going to see what condition the uh, Ural's in. Hopefully, hopefully, the battery is at at least 10%, because if it's at zero, we can't drive it out of there. And that'll mean that, again, me sneaking down here and starting to clear everything out was a waste of my time. Well, here it is. Good news, there doesn't appear to be any zombies around it, except for that guy up there. And maybe the flamer down there will hear us if we back down there to turn around to get on the ramp. But that's... A... Oh, nope, there's a guy right there. Hey, guy. And bye, guy. And... Dang it, man! What is with the vehicles in this world? Every single one of them I've found so far has had a 0% battery. Come on, that one was dead too. <sighs> well, looks like Operation Ural Extraction is uh, no longer active. So, we only have one hope left, and that is to check the gas station that's down over there somewhere and hope that there's a battery there that's got a charge on it. So I'm going to cut here and check the gas station, and if there is a battery there, then I will meet you guys right back here. I'll put it in there, and if there's not, well, then I will meet you down by the beach and sign off. And then by next episode, if I haven't still, or rather still haven't found a battery, then I will be geared up to leave Berlin on foot to explore. So, I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, everyone, I had absolutely no luck finding a battery over at the gas station, sadly. So, we're going to have to end off here today. So, as the moon rises over Germany, I say to you, goodbye. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, and I'll see you again next time.